Good evening again. Let's try this again. Yep, it's going to work this time. I don't want to. Don't worry, we've stocked up on health. I think we can tank the hits. But we have to. I don't want to do this. Neither do I. Force yourself. Slap yourself. Oh, you can actually slap yourself. I don't want to do this, Kim. It seems like there's a part of me that refuses to do this. Slap yourself. Say what? Officer. What are, you, what are you warning me about? There's nothing wrong with slapping yourself in a moment of, you know, mental anguish. Too late. You ruined it. Just say it now. <laughs> oh, I guess I ruined it. Okay. Your husband's dead. Really dead. Excuse me? What? What did you say? That was health damage for whatever reason. Was that from the slap or from saying it? Keep an eye on that. She's in pain. She's in so much pain. And so are you. Your chest is burning. Mm. We are very sorry to inform you, but your husband, Victor Mejon, was found dead this morning on the Martinez boardwalk. See, why couldn't you have just led with that, Kim? Clearly I'm not up to this. You could have just started with that and, and not forced me to do this. Oh. Hey, we've got that breakthrough imminent, though. I mean, we already did last time. For, in case you didn't see the last one, we managed to make negative minus, like minus progress throughout the entire thing. So I got back to where we were. But uh, I guess I didn't spend as quite as much time doing it, so that's only just triggered. She touches her neck, eyes pale like pearls in seawater. Oh, but he was just... Alive? Yeah, that tends to be how it happens. Uh, she looks at the kitchen table where two cigarette butts are still in the tray. I understand that this comes as a huge shock. I want you to know that me and my partner are here for you if you have any questions. We are very sorry for your loss, ma'am. See, consummate professional. Why did you even ask me here? Look, look at me, for fuck's sake. What happened to him? Tell me. Her neck and cheeks are covered with red blotches. Her double chin is shaking. Trust me, ma'am, you don't want to know. He fell and smashed his head against the bench. He drank himself to death. Like, n none of these are good. Like, that's terrible because she could just conjure up the work. She could conjure up something worse in her imagination than the truth. That is the truth, but could be phrased a bit better. I guess that's the nicest way to do it. You know, technically true, but not graphic. So, yeah. Why? It's that bad you stupid why did you say that shut up half light it's my playthrough i can do what i want <laughs> it looks like he slipped on the boardwalk fatally i'm afraid it was just a very unfortunate accident although i thought he has played a role you, you keep going kim excuse me while i just hit huff some nose of head and down some magnesium during this conversation and you just found him there? Lying in the cold? Yeah. How long had he been there? It's hard to say. This whole conversation has been hard to say. Uh, for a few days at least. Very long, ma'am. I'm sorry. Um, I don't actually know. I guess a few days. Was it a few days? Hmm. Super long, like since ancient Roman times. She doesn't reply. Her eyes well up with tears as she struggles to keep it together. You hear the clock ticking in the children's room. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend, a family member, someone who could be here for you? No, no. I just need to tell my girls. The air gets sucked out of her lungs suddenly. It burns like acid. God, should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? 
Oh, I just realised how that must come across. Just, uh, just a noise like that. All right, I'll call them. Yeah, she's sorting this out herself. Really, we're not much help here. She breathes in again, trying to steady herself. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? He's in a better place. I don't know where they go. <laughs> it's not what she meant, man. Ah, uh, he's still there on the boardwalk. He's in the morgue. He's in the morgue walk. I don't know where they go. No, I meant where is his body? Yeah, I don't know that either. He was taken to the city morgue. Oh, okay. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. He hands a relief look with the morgue's contact information. You had all this, Kim. You should have... I should have been on the back foot here and you leading with this. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? Could pour you a drink. I think I've got some in one of my pockets. No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still a bit... She rubs her face, blotchy and numb. Um... Oh, the, no! Ugh. Oh, I don't like that one. It's like... Like it's polite, but it's also making it about you, and that really isn't what you should... You should just l say that and just go, you know? A brain condition. Yes, you're a total fucking horror show. I drank too much, and now I can't do anything right anymore. Oh, God, this is... This is the worst. I should stop. I should stop choosing the worst options. Yes, that's what happened to Victor too. No, mine's worse. Apologies. My partner did not mean to make light of the situation. I, I wasn't. I was deadly serious. You know what? It, it doesn't matter. I'll just leave. Again, if there's anything we could do for you, then don't hesitate to call the RCM, ma'am. She just nods. Distant and inconsolable, the bed springs rattle beneath her as she begins to shake. These are her last reserves of strength. Her muscles will give in soon to a scream. I'll take it from here. Thank you. She points at the front door, breathing fast now, holding herself back. We should step outside and talk. Set the library card by her, leave the room. At which point she hissed static, which is kind of a strange stress response, but you know, people deal with grief in different ways. Not sure where that is in the stages of, you know, griefing, bargaining, acceptance, radio static. Hard to tell. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. Oh, is it this one again? Did we did we already do this? Guess. It's the, well, I know which one. It's the sorry one, isn't it? Yes, sorry cop. Right. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then. No, Shall let's we? not. We already decided this. Yes, yes. Impotent rage and lamentation. Let's wrap it up. I'm not sorry. No, you don't. Come on. You'll be back. Fuck off. Wow. Oh. And this one. Cleaning out the rooms. I remember this. What uh, if you didn't lose your memory? Yeah, we did see this. What if something in Martinez came and stood? Shush. Good. We've come full circle to where we should have been by the end of last one. Great. Kim, are you about to tell me I did an excellent job in there? So. The death notification. The lieutenant says, as soon as you've left the apartment, there's nothing to discuss. Let's move on. That did not go. I'm sorry, I know I fucked up. He didn't... Well? No, it didn't. I, I fucked up. It's alright. Don't worry about it. His eyes wander over the streets. 
I'll call the station when we're finished with the day and let them know the name of the deceased. What about Billy and her kids? There's not much we can do for them anymore, I'm afraid. So that's it? That's it. We should get back to our case. There's nothing more we can do here. All right, we'll get back to it then. And, officer, I've seen worse. This wasn't the worst I've seen, okay? Now let's go. Really? Wow, that f fucking hell. I'm sorry you had to see worse than that. Now where the fuck are we going? Oh yes, we didn't really know what our next lead was. So we were reluctantly going to talk to Everard. Now that we've done his door thing. Uh, so be it. I think there's anything else in here that I can think of. We failed the whole uh, business pitch with Cindy, so that didn't go anywhere. Becoming a man of plenty uh, somehow. We'll have to achieve that some other way. But Christ knows how exactly. Kids all right? Well, you're not, but are you the same? Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep? Apparently, she doesn't like people standing behind her back. Logic error. She is not sleeping right now. Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. Why would you even say that? Sneaking up on me like that. It's not a good idea to scare me, pig. Not a good idea at all. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't I didn't think I was being that stealthy to be honest. I think the hat is kind of a you know, a major wandering landmark of uh, where I am at all times. Lack of trousers probably makes me stand out a bit as well. But apparently I'm a stealth god ninja. We have put points into Savoir Fair, to be fair. To be Savoir Fair. Fat racist. Guy. Who we didn't quite work out. Oh, you're back up again. How are you doing? The unpromising race pupil returns. Oh, that's new. Why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so-called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degraded. But you're all part of the union. The hardy manlets are on the pay of the company. I answer to the union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Simonese. Is that why you can't afford a t-shirt? Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. Which one? I still kicked you in the face. You can't ever live that down. It's a bit of a slog to get back in here. I 
don't suppose we can convince this door to open yet. You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. Hmm. Nope. Batman, I opened the door to Mugman. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. I opened Don't the door you asked me. Can we discuss the murder now? Already... I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? The deal wasn't for me to go inside, so I didn't. Uh, I did go inside. He had the glorious flag of Revachol the Suzerain on his wall. I may have gone inside and seen a collection of racist mugs. Just as I thought. Culturally antiquated mug collection. What a weasel. Pissing on Everart's Rainbow Coalition. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is going to start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is going to be good. Okay. Um... The mug collection I mentioned was in the apartment. I found a similar mug in the trash with the hanged man's clothes. Racist mugs in the trash and in the apartment? You guys are just light years ahead of me. Shut up. I have so much confidence in the ability of your organisation. I'm relieved you're doing this and leaving me to do what I do best. Helping people. With the power of politics. Yes, yes. Do you think this weasel is somehow connected to the murder? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't cross paths like that. All I want is for you to succeed in your investigation. I would never complicate things for you. The fuck are you talking about? This weasel might have cleaned up after the killers. Believe me, Harry, he's a nobody. It's your basement variety nobody. Can't imagine him being connected to a high-caliber case like this. But he does live nearby. Maybe it's a pedantic weasel. Fascists are neat freaks, if you don't mind me saying so. I feel like a real detective right now, Harry. Am I getting this right? He imitates bashing something with an imaginary baton. That's not how you baton someone. The technique is way off. You strike with your whole body, not just the baton. Thanks, coach. Uh, great technique, you'd make a great sergeant. There's more to police work than whacking an imaginary baton. No, you have to put your weight behind it if you want to do real damage. Say nothing. Yeah, it's more about drinking and drugs than charades. Of course, of course, Harry. I'm not a real police officer. You are. <sighs> Slimy motherfucker. I've heard about a connection between the lynching and the strike. I'd like to hear what you know about it. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild pines. Sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us black caps. Uh-huh. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? A security contractor. Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Sadamaritsa. You name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Wait, how are the pineapples involved? Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. You have a village elephant? No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical and so is the village. But the mercs and their brutality are very real. Continue. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. 
I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. Wait, they move the container? Yes. I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But enough about me and my fun container. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out and trees. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, what you need to realize is, we dock workers are not pushovers. I don't like how he ignores Kim entirely. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. That's a hell of a push. The whole neighborhood is in on it? Potentially, Harry. Potentially. We got arm wrestling champions, rowing club people, ex-coal miners, tough guys, all ready to spring into action for their home base. So, which one was it? There's a militant wing inside the Union. A group of people whose duties don't involve manual labour, but peacekeeping in the neighbourhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. That sounds a bit like organised crime. Sounds a lot like organised crime. They're like you guys. Idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Oh, great. You're the fat father. The godfather. The fat godfather. Again, that sounds like organized crime. So these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. <laughs> I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martin A's boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. Hmm. Okay, the thought plickens. How do you know the mercenaries were hired by the shipping company? How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. Hmm. Tell me about Titus Hardy and his crew. Oh, they are simply fine young men, all seven of them. Exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. When they're not murdering people, yeah. Okay. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's second in command? They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martin A's and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets.
Hmm. I did already make them and I think I oh that was it he did in a parallel timeline shoot me in the head so but of course it's the least I can do for my good friend Harry I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk you can now go and tell Titus about this see what he has to say also Harry here's five real why are you giving it to me I'm not giving you anything. I'm just holding out five real. Normally, I refuse these, but we need to get more big money hustler points. The lieutenant watches you pocket the banknote. He looks a little puzzled. I feel a little puzzled. Good boy. A real team player. Now, do you have any more questions? Uh, you mentioned a lawyer girl. Oh, Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. There was a bullet in the hanged man's head. So they shot him. He sounds pleasantly surprised. He was shot in the head before he was hanged. How odd. I don't know what to say, Lieutenant. They told me they hanged him. A hanged man is what I saw when I took a look into that yard. What I do know is, the case is in safe hands. If anyone can get to the bottom of this shot and hanged man, it's my two little policemen. Godspeed, policemen. Right, that's that then. Was it a good tour? I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martin A's. And of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. But it's like I can't completely trust you. Yet. Yet? Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I want to, but I just can't. I am a man of the left, and the right, and the centre, and some other weird things. A man of the left. So you have to be a social democrat. He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a man of the left, I am a patriot of Revachon. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? I'm more left than you are. <laughs> Technically, I'm also that. This is another corrupt scheme, isn't it? I'm neither left nor right. I do what my heart tells me to do. You're right not to trust me. I take care of me. I'm a hustler. I grind. I'm a money engineer. I talk in fucking riddles. Perfect, Harry. That's perfect. My version of the left is not against the companies, it's with the companies. Honestly, what I have in mind is a business proposal. A left-wing business proposal, but still... And what would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper, and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. Hmm... What are the signatures for? I'm glad you asked, Harry. The Union is going to build a modern youth centre in Martinez. It will be righteous. We're going to get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. I think it's not entirely out of the question that they may do both. Roller skating, not drugs, Harry. You like this. No, I don't. There's a nameless little Come on, where was electrochemistry there? Houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. Nameless little street? Do you mean the fishing village? Yes, yes, the little cul-de-sac on the coast, where all the men have drowned in either the sea or the bottle. A gloomy place doesn't have that union attitude. You're already pretty deep into this. What's a little more? No one can see you here in Martinez. 
What does that mean? Plenty of people can see me. I'm walking around with a massive hat and no trousers. What will happen to the current occupants? They are just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth centre designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. Hmm. Kim, what do you think of this? It depends. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Clare was very useful. He studies Everard. But he thinks it's your call. Stop making things my call, Kim. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. But once we get really talking, well, I'm going to hand you the keys to Martin A's and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. Hmm. If I say no to this, is it are we just going to go around in circles for a while, come back and have to do it? I seem to remember that being how it's gone in my past playthroughs. I also seem to remember this not being a one-way thing, so... You bring joy to my heart, Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here. He hands you an open white envelope. You need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I heard there was some trouble with the water lock, but it should be fixed now. Once you have the signatures, mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then I know we can do business together. I mailed the signatures you asked me to get. Lie. I, it's, he literally just gave me the envelope. No, you didn't. <laughs> I know the mailman, Harry. I know everyone and everything that happens in this town, and I know there's no letter in that mailbox yet. Just like I know you'll get it done. Once you stop horsing around, let me know when it's done. By all means, Harry. What's on your mind? Very little. I'm surprised there wasn't, like, unique dialogue there for him saying that he just gave you the envelope, so you couldn't have possibly have posted it. But apparently he will know whether I've done it anyway. Because spies or something. Hmm. I don't suppose you've got anything more to tell us. Mister, I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. Um, I questions? No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, wisdom withers if not shared. And old Leo is always up for sharing. Are you the Leo who wrote the note to make more banners? Oh, yes, yes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. What was that about the borscht? Oh, yes. I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> it's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadan's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. Power borscht, huh? Never heard of a borscht that turns little guys into dog fighters. Alcohol, however. What do you mean by taking this soup to the men? Is it for striking? Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. Who makes it at the Whirling and Rags? Oh, the Whirling's cook. He makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manana in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grad. Yeah, we ain't come across that problem already. Okay. Looks like the Borsch is spiked. I'm gonna look into it, apparently. Oh, sure, mister. Sure. You do that. Yes, sir. Well, that's an extra thing we can do. Although I don't know how, because we can't 
talk to the guy. He doesn't speak. We don't speak his language. Kim, we have to install Duolingo. It's the only way. Also, why am I walking? I should not be walking. We run everywhere. What? What are you doing? Run when I tell you. You a wee scabby prick. Okay. No? Why has it started doing that? That's very peculiar. tackle first here. There is... The envelope. With a stamp attached to the right upper right corner, handed to you by Everett Claire inside, got some legal documents with two names printed on them. Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter, both signatures are required. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. Kim, what do you think of this? I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine. I like the print side. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not a perfect solution, but... Look at the zoning plan. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. Logic. Try to find a loophole in the deal. This probably isn't going to work. But we will have a slightly better chance if we take a huff on our magic puffs. Alright, give that a go. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. 72%. A 12 to 40 month construction period. And Still plenty of chance for that to fail. Addendum. Okay. There is no loophole. What? The simple truth is, the current residents are going to lose their street access. And for the next 12 to 40 months, their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. What are the ramifications of this? Once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. The noise will be tough on the villagers, but I guess that's just the cost of progress. Look, Kim, these people are going to have to move away. Can we do something about it? I should have seen it. The lieutenant frowns as he reads over the document again. Everard probably has eyes on us, but we could try to get other people to sign this instead of those listed. Or you could forge their signatures yourself. By the time he finds out, we'll already be gone. Hmm. Everard's people could be watching you here. That gives us minus 10. And our interfacing is meant to be okay. Alright, well that works out perfectly. We'll find somewhere where we're apparently not being watched and uh, and then probably also take some speed to help with that because speed helps you forge signatures in case you didn't know, which I didn't know until it just came up there. But you know, 
Why did I go in here? What? I suddenly felt like I had something to sell, but I'm not sure I do. What was this in aid of? I got a couple of postcards, I suppose. Banged up fuel container. Fine, we're in here now. I really don't know why I did that. Oh well. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help. Sure. Let me have a look. Um. Yep. Anything else you're thinking of selling? This. And this. And this. Could sell the gun, but. Empty cassette case. Uh, I don't know if that's ever going to be any use now. Um, probably not. Fuck it. Another time, perhaps. Perhaps. Josh. that day. Hmm. I just accidentally uh, hit Q, which does fiddles with the time slightly. Okay. Good to know, I guess. Right. Nobody should be watching us here. Speed. <laughs> you take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 oh. month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. Fuck, he really has got people everywhere. But not inside, like inside the church. You can't possibly have people in here, I would hope. Wow, your, your dancing's really improved, Andre. Take the legal documents out of the envelope. What? A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. What the fuck? Who's the brat in here then? Is it you, Egghead? What's, what? Maybe the crab man works forever, aren't they? Where the hell do I go then? That Someone's not going to be able to technically see me.
Oh, I wasn't sure if we could actually go in there. Feels safe and warm in here, not like outside. Well, that's good. Industrial coal pellets burn with an orange glow. Okay, so there's you. Are you working for Everot? Surely not. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. What the fuck? A 12 fuck? to 40 month construction period. Really? What's he got on you then? Little girl. How much is he paying you? Hello, mister. A young girl, barely four or five years old, working for Everhart. Sits on the sofa. She is looking at you with a frank curiosity, ready to tell on you back to her master, who pays her with dolls and biscuits. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Give me the toy. It's bugged. I need to rip its head off. I heard there was a girl here who has armoured gloves. Is that you? Did I hear that? I don't remember. Oh, I had gloves. Very big ones. Heavy, too. Where are they now? Where did you get these gloves? That too. Found them when Lemmy and I were playing hide and seek. In an empty house. Where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. And where are the gloves near? I hid them. The twins were going to take them. They're stupid. She lifts her stuffed toy up and looks into its one remaining eye as though searching for confirmation or checking that the camera still works. We are going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He enunciates the last two words carefully. Oh. She doesn't seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. They're in my sandcastle. She Behind our house. Under the sand, you can break the castle. It's not very good. That's very generous of you. Are you Lillian's daughter? I would hope so. Yes, I am. Little Lily. You know my mom? Not really, but I'd like to. No, he probably didn't say it like that. But if he did, then he might say it like that. Uh, we met earlier. That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. Well, she has a sword, so, you know, probably probably dissolves any potential anger situations quite quickly. Are the twins outside your brothers? Yes. They don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. They also don't talk. They look the same. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell them apart. They look identical, right? I said the same thing. They look identical. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk, says me, like I'm any authority on that. Um, what's that, pointing at the stuffed bird hanging from the ceiling? It's a grouse. You might be able to get on Gart's good side if you make up for the school you broke. Hmm, maybe, but do I need to? He's not going to let me sing karaoke again. And I've already got a new place to live in this shack, so... Yes, but what's it for? I don't know. Can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure. Just go and get it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. Thank you, child, for giving away your mother's possessions to a stranger. All right. You just need to grab it from the ceiling and go. What's that thing you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend. So, like... She holds the fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lamby is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. You hear a shutter click. Lamby looks like he's falling apart. Yes. Lamby has lived a long life. Lamby was a... Rav... Rev Revanchist, revolutionary, Revisholian, revisionist, rebel? Was he a revolutionary? <laughs> yes! Lamy was a 
was a resolution Eric. Your brain is bad. Bye. Okay. Seven real fifty. Cool. Oh, that's pretty good. Fuck God, we could sell that. What are all these bottles? I hope they're not full of piss. Right, bye. Oh yeah, and the gloves. My brain's not great either. Said her sandcastle? Where's her sandcastle then? Oh, that. Weather has not been kind to Lily's little sandcastle. The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back to you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb network. Oh, really? That, hmm, okay. Um, broken. The little castle? The reigning lord must have come upon some really tough times to let it sleep in such decrepitude. Don't be stupid, Kim. There's no lords in a sandcastle. Reach in the catacombs and pull out the shiny object. The walls and floors give way to the giant's greed. Collapse and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Nice! Congratulations. That's the gauntlets down then. We're doing good on the armor collection front. Yes, we are, I think. Yeah, we do have the boots, don't we? So. <gasps> Plus two interfacing. That's perfect. Cool. We'll be a full body armoured thing in no time. Unfortunately, we can't seem to find a place that isn't fucking bugged. Is my own house bugged? Do this pretty soon, all the speed's gonna run off, uh, run out, uh, wear off. You take the legal documents out of the envelope, yes, a 12 to 40 month construction period, and the zoning plan in the addendum. Right, well, Lily's a mole, but at least, uh, oh, and Kim doesn't follow me in here. Maybe Kim's a fucking mole, Christ. Um, an indirect modes of taxation actually gives us a bonus on this, cool. We should succeed at this. There's really no... There's really only 8% of a reason that we would fail this. Uh, Alright. Roll them dice. With a confident flourish, you complete your forgery. What do you see on the signature line? Two names. Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. Indeed. They look distinctly different and very convincing. These might as well be their actual signatures. But they're not. And the document will be nullified if they dispute it. That means Everard will have to start over. Perfect. All you need to do now is mail the signatures to Everard's accountant in La Delta. Super. For all the things I'm doing different in this playthrough, one thing that remains the same is fucking over Everard. Because... That's just always something that's more satisfying to do. I think in one of them I did play up to him. But it's not... I don't think you really get much from it. You know. Um, more fun to try and fuck him over like this. So That is what we will do. I believe you can also... Um, like get other people to sign it. I think you can convince Doom Spiral idiot doom spiral to sign it and possibly someone else maybe one of the um, dance guys in the church I seem to remember that being a thing uh, 
Right, okay, we'll mail that and then we got two things in the whirling potentially, so we can head back that way. Quickly, Kimothy. Fuck. Just walked past the mailbox, didn't I? It's fine, we'll do it on the way back. Hello to the spam bot in chat. Nice of you to join us. And I don't want to buy followers, thank you very much. Um, okay, let's try and sort out this borscht nonsense. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Oh, God. By the way, we speak Revisholian in Revishol. Get your Revisholian nationhood on. They should at least speak the language. Um, do you know what's behind that door? Point to the blue door. He looks up at you, then looks away quickly. Shrugging and muttering something to himself. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. All right then. Leo said your friends with Manana. Is that true? The mention of Manana. Manana, whatever. Attention. All right. He smiles and I delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar that. That's fine. words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's in the borscht? The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. Uh, yes? Hmm. Borscht need more vodka? Oh, you know a few things then. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Vodka Borscht! I love it, Bratan! Turn it the fuck up and then ask for some yourself! Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea, honestly. The place is a powder keg. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I'll leave the cooking to you. I have business. Uh, no, no vodka. Turn your fingers counterclockwise. Cut it. Oh, we could turn it up. That's that's more in line with our character to do. Although I don't think I've done that as often. I also don't recall it making too much of a difference. Hmm. Yeah, knowing how this plays out, I'm gonna say no, actually. Just to break character momentarily. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. Okay, that's all. Stay masculine. <laughs> Again. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't know if that plays into something later, but... <sighs> We've hit enough game overs at this point, is what I'm saying. And there's one part that, towards the end, you, you don't want to game over the finale. Um, we have points, we should use them. We were going to put them into interfacing. Or at least one of them. Yippee guy -yay. Um Could get electrochemistry up to eight. Or start putting some into perception and things. Composure. Hmm. Although Savoir Fair can now go up to nine. 
so fuck it. <laughs> that's, that's a waste of a point, but I don't care. I, I just want Savoir Fair to be up to go nuts and tell us more stupid bullshit. Uh, it's, it's become somewhat endearing now. Oh, hello. Hi, gendarme. Another rendezvous. <laughs> oh, here we go again. Okay. Hello. Adjust your tie. I see you found yourself a little something from my wardrobe. Not bad. Not bad at all. What brings you here? Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm wearing all your clothes. Sorry about that. I mean, you're fine with it. I mean, it's fine. What are you doing here? Tell me again about that muscular type who came to investigate the crime. I met your Sunday friend. Probably shouldn't mention that. About this hat I'm wearing. You can keep it. I don't mind. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. <laughs> I wasn't really planning on giving it back anyway. Um, I took it to blend in. I'm undercover, you see. Thanks. It's like carrying a piece of you with me at all times. Is it now? <laughs> well... Enjoy it. Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at my feelings. Uh, uh, hmm? Stretch Armstrong? Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. Hmm. What did he look like? Muscular. Handsome. Strong. Like one of those military types. Okay. Was he alone? Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. His earpiece? Yes, you know those tiny speaker microphones that fancy security guards sometimes wear. What was he saying? Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Hmm. And what did you tell him? Nothing. That I didn't see anything. And he believed you? Why shouldn't he? Did you tell him about your Sunday friend? What friend? Your Sunday friend, the witness. No, I don't think it came up. Besides muscular, did he have any other identifying traits? Oh, uh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. Hmm. He sounded vaguely Oranese. No, not vaguely, scratch that. He sounded definitely Oranese. Okay, thank you. Sure. Anything else on your mind? His lazy eyes stroll over your face. Don't stroll over my face. What are you doing here? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? I live here. My room is right upstairs. Uh, I'm here to drink myself into oblivion. I'm here to kick some ass and solve the case I'm working on. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I just go wherever life takes me. Um, I, my room is right upstairs. <laughs> Convenient. But what are you doing here? Talking to me. My room is right upstairs. No, um... I met your Sunday friend. You did? And how did you like him? I didn't. He's a government official. I don't trust governments. I didn't like him as much as I like you. Uh, you were right. He was magical. Magically bureaucratic. Yeah, we, we, we didn't really get on. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> Why not? Who is he? What are you, you two? What was he... Why was he staying at your place in the middle of the night? I don't want to talk about other people. I want to talk about you. <laughs> oh, is Kim, like, just struggling to hold his shit together in the background? Uh, who is he? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. He can always return. Return? Return where? To his opportunities in Occident, Sir Leclay. Still. His coming and going brings some life to the village. Or is it just money? I don't know. Hmm. What are you, you two? Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. What does it mean, a Sunday friend? <sighs> that he won't be there when times get tough, I guess. Is that even a friend? It is. On Sundays. Hmm. You speak in riddles. Uh, why was he staying at your place in the middle of the night? I simply can't fathom it. He has keys. And he likes the view. To the sea, I mean. 
Yes, sure. I don't want to talk about other people. I want to talk about you. Hmm? What about me, Gendarme? This is not going to work. <laughs> Sorry. He's so different. It's that line again. <sighs> Maybe we should have put that point in the composure. Give it a go. It's a white check. It's the sports. He's a sports guy. All about that physical prowess and athletic skill. Nothing else here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bye-bye, Gendarme. All right. Sporty man. Um, Birdman. I got you a new bird. Can I help you? Got you a new bird. I should really just sell it rather than give it to you, but... Fuck it. What is this thing? It was actually me who broke the great screw I wanted to apologise by bringing you this rough grouse. Now, I'm not going to go that far. Uh, it's no biggie. I just thought it would look nice on the wall. I'm that kind of cop. What? The interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm going to go with thank you. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. Yeah, you're right, Kim. It's not actually about that, but he liked it. Oh, it's hard to tell when you're being sarcastic or not. So, uh, can I sing karaoke again? <laughs> no, it's not even an option anymore. How frustrating. Um, but mailbox, right. Then we'll probably call it there. Call it mailbox. We've actually got a few things done this stream. And they didn't all fail. I'm not sure any of them failed. No, some of them definitely failed. Yeah, you can always rely on some of them failing. Um, but not all of them. So that's something. Hmm. Still don't know how we're gonna <laughs> become a man of plenty, but we'll we'll work on that. Um, and then next time, I guess we'll talk to Titus again. See how that goes. Our ultra liberal is getting better. We're almost as ultra liberal as we are fascist, but uh, still not as either of those as we are communist. Um. Yeah, I. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to get them up to 15. Because the fascist dialogue options actually like actively hurt you. So it's... It's hard to say them. I mean, that's kind of what they say. They say... You say... When it first uh, comes up, it says... You say the hard things that no one else wants to or something. But it's like, no. Those hard things actually hurt me in terms of morale. So that's not great. Oh, our sorry cop has gone up to five. That seems to have jumped a bit. Um, but yeah, we'll carry on with that. Uh, cool. And we'll post this letter. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. I knew we'd get to use this mailbox for something. Other than kicking? Yes. Drop the white envelope into the mailbox. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. About a week's worth of mail as collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. Probably did the right thing. You can't trust that slug Everard. You know he's going to play you somehow. All right, let's go back to Everard. If we don't mention anything to him, he won't know before it's too late. Nice. We're a sneaky sleuth. Being all sleuthy and sneaky. Forging signatures and kicking over sandcastles. But stealthy. Three T's, how idiomatic. Have you. I, did I only just notice that? 
No, I'm fine. And because this bit is a slog, I'll start the next one back at Everard. Cool. Just got time to check on the old Monty cam. He's he's not there. Okay, he was there earlier. Okay, well that uh, both times I've done that has it's been a waste. Okay, that's well the thought was there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, don't trust anyone. Even the kids are in on it. That's what we've learned this time. Spies can be everywhere especially little children.